that is. What is? Losing yourself inside the book. It's a figure of speech. Maybe it is. But maybe. Oh, come on then, out of it. It's just that I know some people who did get lost in books. Literally. Really? Yes. And I'll tell you about it. But only if you want me to. <laughs> and if I listen to your story, you'll leave me alone afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Okay, get on with it then. Very well. On a dark and stormy night. Nice opening. First! On a dark and stormy night, two friends made their way home through the woods. They were caught in a worse and so. They grew worried that they would take shelter. But they knew not where. It was a relief for them, and they came upon a large building. What such building was doing there was a question they would have to wait for another time. And they gratefully walked towards it. Right? We go on. In a tempestuous way, an old rusty gate screamed at the building, and it whined back and forth. A warning to trespassers. The pair did not eat this building, though, and entered the grounds. As lightning lit the sky, it illuminated the concerned gargoyles who watched them from on high, frozen still with disbelief. Ooh, and yeah, it's fair. Thanks again. Now the lightning brought something else to their attention. The door to the building was a jar. A jar of what? <laughs> no, it was open. The door was open. Got it? Anyway. They went inside the cold, damp darkness. <laughs> the air was heavy just in time. Then, suddenly, there was light. The torches on the wall of the old corridor, where they found themselves, just lit. Wow. Eyes widening, the boys walked slowly forward, hypnotized by the strange beauty of the light, which cast melancholy shadows. What is this place? The first one was the I don't know, said Luke. But reluctant as they may be, their eyes and their feet were drawn to the end of the corridor where a strange blue light flickered and flashed in some sort of chamber. What did they find? The place that they discovered at the end of the passageway is rich with the smell of leather and wood. There was a light thus covered everything. The time did not ravage the beautiful leather books, which seemed to invite them in. Hello, shouted the first one. Hello, hello, hello. Was the building's reply. What, the building at the top? No, it was an echo. Oh, I see. They looked about them, drinking in the smells and the sights. As they did, something disturbed them. You see, a book fell onto the floor with a bang. They looked at one another. Cautiously, the first one lifted the heavy article up, looked at his friend, and opened it. A moment, a change, darkness, light, a feeling of falling. By the next thing they they were not in the library. Oh, 
Okay, you see I have turned the device onto the Antarctic sheet. A device? A heater. A fan heater. Or do you expect me to say a gigantic fan heater? <laughs> and soon I will point it in then the ice will melt and the whole world will be underwater. The coordinates? You think I'm going to tell you the coordinates, Mrs. One? Ha ha Okay, the coordinates are <laughs>
a wonderful world of sport. Whatever type of person you are, there is definitely a sport for you. Like basketball, a game of dribbling and passing where the main aim is to throw the ball into the basket, thus earning points. Look at this young fellow. He is using his height to his advantage. Great, what a shot. Football is always popular. Like in basketball, it is important to dribble and pass. But in this game, using your feet is what it's all about. Look, this chap, chap is about to take a penalty. Modern favorites also include sports like hockey, cricket, cricket. rounders, golf, and swimming. <laughs> of course, thousands of years ago, people enjoyed their sports too. None more so than ancient Greece where they held the first Olympics. Wrestling was a favorite of the crowds. The exciting matches could sometimes last for days. <laughs> Boxing was another highlight in the first Olympics with the winners becoming heroes. There were no weight divisions, which meant someone really big could fight someone really small. Let's take a look at this match. <laughs> Let's find out more on the next page. Long ago, there was a good and powerful king called Numitor. All the people loved Numitor and chanted his name. The good king had a beautiful daughter called Princess Rhea Sylvia, and she too was loved by all of the people, as her father the king. Everything was wonderful, but good king Numitor had a brother called Amulus, and Amulus was jealous of good king Numitor and wanted to be king himself. I know what, I'll stick on one that's dessert at. Come on, you're not king anymore. Give me that crown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right now, so I'm king. I'm proud. <laughs> the king got Amulus to now take the throne. He was worried, though, because if beautiful Princess Rhea had children, they could try to take the throne from him. Wait, she can have kids? <laughs> The yeah, princess Rhea captured and taken to the temple of the god Mars to live alone for the rest of her life. Ha! He said, Now no one will be king except me because the princess will never have children. Ha ha ha! <laughs> but what he did not know was that the god Mars had fallen in love with Rhea Sylvia, the princess. He had been watching her as she was locked in his temple. Soon they are got her married and had two baby boys. <laughs> <laughs> But the wicked king heard about the children and wanted to get rid of them. Do you have kids? <laughs> One night, he sent some bad men to the temple to sneak in and steal the children while Rhea was asleep. The bad men took the babies to the river and put the basket in the water. They thought that the river would drown them and went back to tell the wicked king that the babies were dead. But they were not dead. The basket floated down the river, tossing this way and that in the stormy night. No matter how bad the water got, the basket did not tip. Mars, their father, was protecting them. At last, the basket came to the breast at the side of the river. The babies cried. 
They were hungry and needed their mother, but luckily a wolf heard them and came to look at them. The wolf left them and took the babies and raised them as if they were her own children. The boys grew up wild, but one day the shepherd passed by and saw them. He took them with him to teach them to read and write and speak. The shepherd called the boys Romulus and Remus. As they got bigger, they helped the shepherd with his sheep. As they got even older, they did lots of good deeds. They were strong and caught thieves and helped people who needed help. In fact, they did so much good that the good king Numitor, their grandfather, who had been put on the island by his wicked brother, heard about them and wanted to meet them. He sent a servant to go and find them and bring them to him. After hearing their story, Numitor knew them to be his grandchildren and informed them of their birthright. He told them what his wicked brother had done and it was not long until they had raised an army and were fighting against their great uncle. Victorious, the pair freed their mother and restored their grandfather to the throne. The boys, though, returned to the mouth of the river where the wolf had found them and decided to build a great city over which they could rule. Indeed, it was a wonder to behold, but the pair could not agree on a name for the city. Romulus wanted to call it Rome, whilst his brother Remus wanted to call it Rem. Alas, a great argument broke out, and the spirit of the wolf came out in them. Rem! No, it's gonna be wrong! No, Rem! No, it's gonna be wrong! Rem! Wrong! 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 Remus was killed in the fight, and that is why to this day the city has been called Rome, and why the Romans honored the symbol of the wolf as they did.
On the face of Africa, a lion stalks its prey. This lion is hungry and needs food if it is to survive. The mighty hunter sees up until it's ready to pounce. The unlucky lion has lost his dinner, and search for food will go on. Across the plains, blind in wait for an unsuspected victim, a crocodile floats, camouflaged and locked. Soon a baby elephant comes to the watering hole, and the crocodile has a chance to attack. He is silent and glides towards the prey. Uh, uh, achoo! Something seems to spook the elephant and it beats a hasty retreat. High up in the trees, a monkey rides, eating bananas, having no idea that something is slithering towards him. Suddenly, the snake attacks. The monkey will sing fast if he is just escaped. <laughs> In the mountains of China, a panda is busy sitting and eating, and eating, and eating. Climbing a tree, trying to squirt the bamboo, and stuffs it into his mouth. He loses his balance, tumbling onto the grass below. This way and that, an orchestra of color.
I wish I could compose a music like Chopin.
Ai, não é comigo, não é comigo. Thank <laughs> you. 